everybody, welcome to another episode of Diary of a Guitar Teacher. I'm your guitar teacher, Cams, and it's an exciting day, I'll tell you why. I've just had the delivery. FedEx. So those that know me may have an idea what this is. It's got some scissors handy. It's one item of three. One was in stock and two are back ordered, so I've ordered just the one they had in stock to see how it gets me going. There we are. Focus. There we go. Tascam DR10L. It's a recording unit, lavalier microphone with an SD recorder attached. And this is going to be for interviews and for recording in a noisy environment, something of which I'm going to be doing quite a lot of in the coming months because of my new job working for Crofter's Music Bar in Brodick. So here we have a simple white coloured lavalier microphone and it has a TRS on the end, tip ring sleeve, eighth inch jack and the unit itself, you get an idea of the size it's a very small unit, now I've never had one before so I'm going to have to have a quick look in the instruction book, break the habit of a lifetime figure out how it works and then I'll do a test recording and compare it. I, it's probably not going to sound as good as what I'm talking into now, which is my Line 6 radio mic, which I love, actually, and it's very comfortable. But if I'm taking this out with me, I've got to take the receiver as well, which is, I mean, it's not a huge thing, but it's just an extra bit of kit to have to find power for. That's a big part of it. And uh, so I'm going to get three of these, which will work for while well, interviewing two people. If they work well, which I'm hoping they will, then I will have the opportunity to add to my collection. And also, I believe I can change the microphone to a better microphone. Uh, from the reviews that I've seen, the microphone that comes with this Tascam unit is, is pretty good. You know, it's not the best microphone in the world. But if I wanted to switch to a Countryman or a Rode or something like that, then I think I can do that. So that's what I'm going to be. I'll check it out in a minute and I'll come back and record some audio with it so that you can compare. Back in a mo. And we're back. Awesome. I'm just going through the menus. It's very simple, actually. Formatted a 16 gig micro SD card stuck in a single triple A battery, went through the menus, it's basically set it to whatever bit depth you want, whatever uh, frequency, 44.1 or 48 kilohertz. You can turn on the leveler, you can set it to dual track mode so that one track records at negative 6 dBs and the other at whatever you set it to and the settings for the gain are low, medium low, medium, medium high and high and you get a tiny little tiny little level meter that shows you your levels. Now the microphone going under my shirt, I've got it basically attached to the top of my t-shirt. It's a bit of a footer, you have to grab some cloth to get it to clip on. I'm still recording into my other device, my Line 6, just so that I can sync up and then I can cut in my uh, Premiere Pro editor between the different audio sources to compare. So it's really light. It's incredibly light. This weighs about four times as much, I would think. I could probably get the weights, but you could look them up yourself if you care. It's got a little belt clip, which actually looks better than the belt clip that comes with this. This one I had to bend to make it actually fit my belt properly, but it fits okay now. This one, well I've not got a belt on so I can't actually test it, but 
I'm sure it will be fine. It feels a little stiff, but I suppose that's what you want. So it's discrete. The microphone cable length is not particularly long, but I don't think that matters too much because it's always going to be clipped to your belt or in your pocket and then coming up under your shirt. And if I'm interviewing a second person or a third person, then you know I'm not going to be stretching it across into my Zoom H4n, which is what I've been doing up till now with condenser microphones in an interview scenario. Which works well, actually. It gives me great audio, but microphones in front of people's faces for video, and you can see why they don't do it on talk shows, you know what I mean? So, um, overall, I'm pretty happy. I did stick in some headphones and monitored the levels as I was testing it, and it seemed to work pretty well. So all that remains to be seen is what the EQ is like and what the, how much leveling I need to do, that sort of thing. And also check that the, the second track, which I've set to minus six dB, which is really in case any loud noises happen or if you suddenly get a fright and you scream and for some reason you want to keep the scream in the audio, then it would clip on a normal uh, gain level but this minus 6 dB will give you some recovery options. So I think that's a really good idea. So it's exciting. I'll keep going with the chat because it's guitar week. I've been working on some material for my new pupils. I've got two new pupils, which I spoke about a bit in the last episode uh, a few days ago. And it's really exciting. I'm really enjoying it. I haven't been working on my rock school stuff. I would really like to start to do some more of that because the local rock school instructor has asked me to fill in for him again in September and I think November as well. So I would like to brush up and get a further along the path on the rock school syllabus. So into sort of grade five and see how we get on with that. I don't have an electric guitar of my own because I did ordered a Gretsch White Falcon, which is a dream guitar of mine, and they sent the wrong one, and then I sent it back, and they sent the wrong one again. So I returned it, and then they said we, they couldn't get the one I wanted, which was the 55 White Falcon Vintage Select. So it was the 1955 reissue, and they couldn't get them till November. The reason I, I like that one is because of the, the inlay on the fingerboard, primarily. Uh, also, it has a different pickup. It's got the, I think it's the Dynasonic pickup rather than the, I forget the name of the other one, Filtertron, I think, that's in the other one, TV Jones Classics. So overall, it's a different guitar, and that was the one I wanted. It also has the vertical Gretsch logo in the headstock, which for some reason just really appeals, you know? So. I've borrowed an electric from a friend of mine. I've actually had it for quite a while and uh, she doesn't seem to be in a hurry to get it back. So thank you, Heather and Fiona, for the loan of that guitar. I'm going to be using it again very soon, I think, to get back into some rock stuff. Uh, Scheduling-wise, my, my weeks got busier since I got taken on by a local uh, a friend of mine who runs a local restaurant and he's hired me to do his social media stuff. So I'm a content creator. I go into the bistro with my cameras and I interview people. I record the live music. I shoot B-roll. They've got me coming in, what day is it today? Tuesday. So tomorrow night I'm going in to meet a financial director. So there's, it's a lot of work and it's work that I'm absolutely loving, really enjoying it. But it does mean, well, like, like most people, um, if you work, then you can't be, you can only do one thing at a time, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. And I need to prioritize the things that earn me money. This channel I love, I absolutely love. And I suppose I should be focusing more on how to bring money in through the channel. And a big part of that is teaching. So I think that by doing this kind of thing, shooting uh, lessons, which I haven't done anywhere near enough of, uh, but just talking as a diary, like I'm doing here, I think is useful because I did have a pupil come and see me and said that they'd been watching my content 
uh, one of my pupils who's a high school kid. His mum said, oh, every time he logs on to the computer, I see that your name comes up. So, you know, it's working. It's working. And it's also, it's good for me to keep the momentum going, you know, make sure I don't slack off. So what I've been doing, I think I might have mentioned this in the last one, is I've, I'm using my Google Calendar now, which I've filled up. I've created a, a separate calendar called Timetable so it doesn't clog up my other calendars and I can switch it off if need be. But it's basically scheduling each hour of the day. And so far it's working. Today, for example, I had an hour of photography and uh, editing, so I started that at 10. I had 9 till 10 is my banking time. So I walk the dogs in the morning, sort of half 7, get back half 8, get showered, breakfast 9 till 10 with banking and other admin, which today involved the unhappy task of paying my tax bill. 31st of July it was due, so it's painful. It's painful paying taxes, but, you know, you got to do it. And uh, also renewing my tax credits, which is another painful thing. But I got all that done in time, sat down to do my photography at 10, and then at 11 I had scheduled a lesson with Mike Dawes, who's a fingerstyle guitar player whose content I love. And uh, that didn't happen. I carried on with the photography. But because I saw that I had a gap after lunch to do video editing and photography for my client, and so I knew that I could just reshuffle. So I'll be doing my lessons once I've done this. All the photography's done. I've created albums of all the musicians that play at Crofter's Music Bar. Well, not all of them, just the ones I've got pictures of. And so now I've got an idea of, of getting out there more and taking pictures of all the acts that come in and, you know, using them for Instagram and Facebook, basically. Which will get me seen as a photographer more by other locals, which could, you know, get me some photography gigs, which would be awesome. So, yeah, slowly, slowly I'm getting there. But I just I've got to make sure that my, my own practice and playing don't get pushed to the wayside in, in the way of of work because, you know, practicing my own stuff is going to help me with my work because it's it's things that I'll be able to use with pupils as well. Um, I mean, I'm not just picking songs and learning songs. I'm actually going through a lot of the theory stuff that, you know, I'd missed out as I was learning coming up as a guitar player. A lot of guitar players just, you know, they don't bother with theory. And so I'm filling those gaps. I'm, I'm making myself be a bit more meticulous with, for example, if I'm learning something from tablature, I'm, I'm working out what the actual notes are. And if I'm playing chords, I'm working out what the notes would be in the chords and then seeing if it matches up with what's on the page and you know that kind of thing. So it's it's slow and methodical, and, but it's, it's helping my playing in, in more ways than I could ever have imagined. So... You know, it's, it's really worthwhile doing. So I'm going to get off this call now and do some, some guitar playing, some guitar practice. I hope you've enjoyed this. It would be nice to hear from you, uh, especially if you're uh, looking for guitar lessons around the local area, the Isle of Arran, KA27. Then hit me up. That would be great. And, uh, oh, here's Clover. Come to say hi. Clover's my basset hound and she's adorable. She really is adorable. So I will sign off now and I will thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this. Uh, share with your friends. You know, I want my podcast to grow and uh, make it more of a living. You know what I mean? Get some engagement and some attention and, and make it fun, you know. So thanks for watching, folks, and I will see you in the next video.